Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Pack one, pick one, open the Clothus. Find cards. Um, this, of course, multicolor. And if you're not going to turn it into a creature, it's not amazing. So, really, do want to be pretty committed to uh, playing creatures, adding devotion for Clothus to shine. And uh, I mean, of course, the ability is still quite good against the escape decks, but what else do we have? A Myers Grasp. Some okay commons in Omen and Carrioted as well but usually prefer Myers Grasp, and then there's a Prophecy add-on common. I think I would take Grasp over Prophecy, but that one's somewhat close. I think I'm taking Grasp over Clothus pack one, pick one. If we had the same pack and we were already either green or red, then Clothus would of course uh, get the nod, but as a first pick I, I don't love it. Probably not gonna take the Berserker, but we've got a couple of good green cards. Blessing, Wanderer and Arachnir are all reasonable. Uh, Blessing would just give us another good removal spell. Can't really go wrong with that. If we take a Wanderer, we could maybe go for kind of the value Constellation decks, which is also okay. And then there's the Arachnir for maybe an escape deck too. I think I'm just going with uh, Blessing. Citizen training looks good. There's a Karyotid. Probably leaning Karyotid for now. There's a Return to Nature. Mogus' Favor and Huntmaster. Nothing really jumps out in the other colors, so don't really have a reason to switch yet. Karyotid, bit of synergy with the Huntmaster. Return to Nature is always okay. Let's go with the Huntmaster. All right, now we're seeing some good blue cards. Pretty late Giant, Thirst, and Mantle. So it's possible that uh, blue is the place to be. Or we could just stick to green for now and take another Huntmaster. If we were to take blue cards, which one do we like? Um, blue, green, Giant is a bit less important than in other blue color combinations since the green tends to have some chunky creatures. Mantle's usually pretty good, helping you protect your big green creatures from removal. Uh, and then Thirst is always quite good too, so probably between Mantle and Thirst. Although Mantles tend to go pretty late, so we can usually pick those up at our convenience. Huntmaster is, uh, you know, a playable card, but nothing exciting. I think I'm okay speculating on the Thirst. There's also Soul Reaper as an option, but uh, this pack is kind of a signal that Blue's open. And there we see Deny the Divine pretty late too. Not a huge fan of the Skirmisher. So we could take Deny and kind of move into blue. Or we could still stick to black maybe with a Charger or Aspect, which are also reasonable options. Could still splash the Myers Grasp, we do have a Karyotid, so... Definitely have the outs to splashing a removal spell or two. Seeing more good blue cards with the Nyad. Memory Drain can also be playable in the right deck. Some uh, green cards, but um, I'm not too excited about uh, any of these. Warden's probably closest to making the deck. Let's take a Nyad. Nothing that I'm thrilled uh, to play here. There's a final flare, but I'm probably not gonna splash red. Skirmisher in case we were lacking two drops. And, you know, blue-green is kind of the constellation color. Got a couple enchantments already, so if we're somehow lacking two drops, I could see playing Skirmisher. Probably better than a Mystic. And Splashing Omen seems unlikely. Eh, don't mind the Wave Rider. So yeah, switching to blue seems to have paid off here, since we got a lot of decent blue cards. And black wasn't really flowing all that much. Grove Dancer's fine, usually shy away from expensive enchantment creatures since they get answered so easily. Only really want the Colossus if we've got a couple Forerunners to give a trample. Uh, probably not gonna play a lead instructor, but I uh, don't really see myself playing any of these. Mm, 
maybe we need unknown shores for fixing, but it's definitely a land that I try to avoid. But if we're splashing something cheap like Mars Grasp, it, it could be worth it, since adding one to the cost of Grasp is still reasonable. So yeah, we're, we're blue-green. We're not thrilled to be blue-green. It's usually not a color combination that's very strong, unless we get some good bombs. But we got the signal that blue's open, so maybe we get past some good blue cards in the next couple packs. Of course, the dream is to get Utropia. There's some other good uh, rares, of course, we could get that would make this deck uh, a bunch better. All right, there's one of them. Arastas, decent. Plays well with our Constellation theme. Hoping to wheel a Wanderer, a Vexing Goal, even a Chimera would be quite good here. Blue and green don't have a lot of interaction, so having some cheap interaction with Dismissal is nice. So far we don't have any escape cards, so a card like Glimpse also gets a lot better if we can use it to kind of leverage the graveyard in the late stages. Pursuit also not super exciting without escape. So I think I take Dismissal and then hope to wheel Glimpse of Freedom. Could also still make a case for like, I don't know, the Daybreak Chimera here. But I don't really want to be green-white. Our blue is not exciting, but it's playable. Especially if we go with the enchantment theme. Yeah, I'll, I'll take the dismissal. Mm, yeah, that's another Chimera. But there's also Wolf Willow Haven, which is okay, giving us some uh, ramp in enchantment form. So that's probably the pick over Return to Nature, which is also a card I'm hoping to wheel. But yeah, our deck is still lacking a good finisher. So now I wouldn't mind picking up something like a Brine Giants or a big flyer in blue. So what are we taking? Sleep of the Dead, only a card I really like in blue-red with Chimeras, where you've got more of a tempo game plan. Could take Pursuit and hope to get some escape cards in green. We could wheel that Glimpse. I don't really want to splash for a Rage Scarred Berserker. Could splash for a Chimera, I suppose. We've got the Karyatid as fixing. I do have a Unknown Shores on the sideboard too. Yeah, maybe it's worth it. Because I do need to start picking up some win conditions and... A Flyer is potentially pretty good here. Alright, so now we've got a couple good options, Shoal Kraken, Brian Giant, and even a Return to Nature. I think I'm leaning Brian Giant, but it's kind of close with the Kraken, I guess. How many enchantments do we have? One, two, three, four, potentially five, six. So I've got a decent amount. So let's imagine we have two enchantments in play, Brian Giant costs... 5 mana? Yeah, I would be happy to play a 5 mana 5-6. Five, Don't have any 5 drops in the deck yet. So do we want a 5-6 a or do we want a 3-5 that can maybe help us loot? Ability on Shoal Kraken is definitely quite nice. Giving us a good uh, way to discard lands in the late game. Yeah, I'll take a Giant's. Now I don't mind the Satessan Training as a cheap uh, enchantment, or the Lionfish. Lionfish also plays well with our blue game plan of playing instants. Although we're pretty light on instants at the moment. Just have a Deny and a Thirst, and a Dismissal. So I think I'm leaning Training. Not really excited about any of these cards. Could maybe splash a Dream Shaper Shaman as a curve topper, plays well with our Satessan training. And I could just splash a bit of red. Yeah, seems reasonable. If I get an Omen of the Hunt, I'll definitely consider playing it. Probably take another training. Eidolon, also a reasonable option here as a mana sink. Once we make a bunch of mana with uh, Karyatid and the Wolf Willow Haven, can sink it into the Eidolon to draw three but I think I still prefer the training as a cheap uh, Constellation Enabler that draws a card. Alright, Warden of the Chains. Another card we could splash. 
but there's also the Omen of the Hunt, which would help splashing in the first place. It is also an enchantment, so it does have some inherent synergy in the deck too. Eh, probably take the Warden and hope to get Omens later. Got the Glimpse on the wheel, Memory Drain's also an option, although it is double blue. Don't necessarily want to force the deck to need double blue. If we're already going to splash a bit of red. Don't have any escape whatsoever, so I think the Glimpse is going to be more important for us. Don't think I'm splashing Thrill. Probably not going to need wings if we're blue. Mystic's pretty mopey, but maybe. Probably doesn't make the cuts, but... Alright, well, we wield the Shoal Kraken, that's surprising. So heading into the last pack, our deck's not great. Definitely needs some help. Some uh, powerful bomb to help us close would be nice. Uh, at least one more piece of mana fixing to help the red splash, which seems pretty necessary since otherwise our deck is kind of lacking a bit of power. And then uh, some removal would be nice too. Well, we open Perforos. Sadly, it's uh, not a very good one in Limited. And especially not on the splash where we're not going to have any red devotion. Blessing and Fateful End are cards I'm pretty happy to splash on the other hand. And then uh, there's another Thirst for Meaning. But yeah, we're lacking removal. Probably makes more sense to take the Blessing, since we have a bit of Enchantment Synergy. Works well with my uh, Shoal Kraken, Brine Giant. And we could pick up some more Constellation cards, maybe if we end up playing the Skirmisher too. Perforos is very rarely playable in limited. The problem is that red is not a color that tends to have a ton of creatures stick around and play and add red devotion. You've got a lot of cards like Fateful End as well that just uh, don't add your devotion. And uh, yeah, if you don't turn Perforos into a creature, it's just not worth the card. All right, seeing some more good red cards, another blessing, Annex. In blue we have a Singer and a Wave Rider. In green a Huntmaster, so nothing too exciting. In uh, green, but the Singer's nice. It's a pretty good blocker. Can play the Dense Speed, keep it up alongside the Night of Divine and uh, Thirst for Meaning too. It's uh, that versus a second blessing pretty much. We're not gonna go double red for Annex. So Blessing would be a fourth red card. At the moment, my fixing is Karyatid and potentially an Unknown Shores. Maybe even two. But uh, that's kind of a last resort. Hoping to find an Omen of the Hunt, another Karyatid maybe. Even an Amulet would be good. I guess it would be a fifth red card if we splash the Shaman too. So our splash is getting pretty deep. But all our blue cards are single blue, which is good, so... Maybe the mana still works out. Well, we'll go with the Blessing. Alright, it's gotta be the Typhon here. Nice, chonky creature. And uh, make use of the Graveyard. Don't have any escape yet. Another nice pack. Witness of Tomorrows. Another Brine Giant. Probably Leaning Witness. Could use an extra finisher. Don't have a ton of 5. And I would rather have one Witness and one Brine Giant than two Brine Giants in hand. Alright, nice. Got the Karyatid. Could see myself playing the Wardens. Now that we're splashing reds, our deck has a bit more late game. So, getting a bit of life. And stalling the board are things we're more interested in. And don't think this is a Chariot deck, so we're not passing up on much. Reds ended up being pretty open. Another Furious Rise. Rage Hounds. Don't think this is gonna work out if we just go red, green, splash, blue. Like, there's a couple blue cards I could splash. Um, Chimera, one of them. Witness and Brine Giant. Shoal Kraken, I could take it or leave it. So how would the deck look like if we lean a bit heavier on the red, green? Thirst also card I could splash. Or uh, three drops are looking pretty gutted at the moment. 
we should be able to get enough playables. But then the problem is, like, do I even take the Furious Rise or do I take the Rage Hound at that point? Don't have a ton of ways to get the Rage Hound through for damage, uh, just the two Setessen trainings pretty much. I guess you could still make a case for Eidolon if we want to stay blue heavy and go blue green splash red. All three are reasonable options here. Kind of depends how these last couple picks uh, shake out. Could easily end up blue green splash red or a red green splash blue, which, you know, ideally this late in the draft we should have made up our mind. But we got the signal pretty early that blue was open. Got a decent amount of blue, but red ended up flowing quite a bit in the last uh, pack especially. Like in terms of two drops, we've got double carrioted and haven, so we've got a nice ramp package at two. Grove Dancer, I'm relatively happy to play since it's just a two mana enchantment creature. Uh, Skirmisher, I would rather not play. So we've got like four or five decent two mana plays. So it's not like we need Rage Hound. I don't think this deck wins by necessarily attacking with a Rage Hound over and over. But I'm also not saying it would be a bad card since if we escape it, it's a four powered creature, can maybe enable some of our synergies too, like the Warden. And uh, we don't have a lot of escape, just have a Voracious Typhon at the moment. So an extra escape card wouldn't be a bad addition. Eidolon would give me a nice mana sink with all the mana we can generate from Karyatid and Haven. So that would be a fine addition, and it's also a cheap enchantment creature for those synergies. Furious Rise is a pretty speculative pick. I do have a decent amount of four powered creatures, but looking at our five drops, they're both three powered, so we would need a training to make them four powered in the first place. And if I'm splashing it, then our red splash is getting pretty deep already, which uh, is not exactly where we want to be. So I kind of dig the I don't know philosophy here, but that probably means we will stick to blue-green splash red instead of making the switch to red-green. I think I'm gonna stick to the Eidolon, since I think we've got a good setup for it with a double Karyatid. And gotta take the amulet here for fixing as much as I would like Starlit Mantle. Don't think I'm playing Turtle, but not playing any of these. And then maybe we'll play another Wave Rider. Yeah, that was a pretty late uh, insight. That was surprising. All right, so we've got a pretty interesting pile here. Of course, in hindsight, Clothus could have been a fine addition. But uh, I think back one pick one, I would still take the Mars Grasp every time. So. Let's uh, see here. How many red cards do we want to splash? Shaman, I could take it or leave it. Definitely want the blessings. Warden, we'll have to take a look at how many four-powered creatures we have. Probably want a Chimera as an extra finisher. So these are still maybes. Then, in terms of removal, interaction in general, we've got Dismissal. We've got Double Blessing. We've got Warbriar Blessing too. And then double denied the Divine as some counter spells. So we've got a decent amount. Then uh, I do like the Eidolon. Skirmishers, usually not amazing. Grove Dancers, fine. Just as a two drop, we can trade off. Even if we don't have a ton of Graveyard Synergy. Uh, Glimpse is also a card I could take or leave, but seems fine. I like the trainings. Uh, I think Wardens makes the cuts. I've got enough enchantments for it to be worth it. Petitioners doesn't seem needed. So yeah, how many four-powered creatures would we end up with if we played a Warden? I've got Huntmaster, Typhon, Brine Giant, that's about it. Of course, it would also help with the Karyatids, making two mana. Dreamshaper Shaman is a card I could definitely consider since it plays so well with the two copies of Satessin Training and the Blessings. So that's kind of a card I'm somewhat interested in here. We do have a lot of mana sources with Double Karyatid and Haven too. So despite our curve being somewhat high, it could still be a 16 land deck. Just because we have additional mana sources with Amulet and Karyatids. 
Um, yeah, the Warden can still block, so it's still a fine blocker. But at some point you want to attack with it as well. Me, yeah, I'm also not super thrilled about the Huntmaster, but I probably wanted just to enable the Karyotids to some extent. Could shave a Wave Rider pretty easily. Although it is a good way to end the game. Yeah, this is a bit of a strange pile, but on the other hand, I'm kind of excited to try it since I don't get to play three color decks that often. But I think we've got a good setup for it now with Karyotids and Amulets. The Knight of the Vines don't look great, we're more of a tap out deck. I do have a Nyad, but uh, that's kind of the only real synergy. Is that unlike the Thirst for Meaning, I can play the instant speed. So yeah, we might not be a Knight of the Vine deck. Glimpse is still reasonable since my only escape card is Typhon. But it's also a card I can easily cut. Like, do I still want Nyad at that point? It's still an enchantment creature, it still blocks okay. Do I want to turtle over it? Probably not. I guess Chimera's not super exciting anymore. And if we can't play it on turn 2 all that uh, often, it's also not as good as uh, in straight blue red, of course. But at Splashing Shaman Double Blessing seems worthwhile. So this is 40 cards. This is with 17 lands. We have a bit of card draw with uh, Eidolon. And Thirst can also discard lands. We can Scry with the Witness. That's another mana sink. Can uh, escape Typhon at 7 mana. And we can also sink mana into the Shaman, upgrading or trainings into actual cards, hopefully. Could still see myself playing the Warden, if only because it can block quite well, since our early game doesn't have a ton of great blockers. So yeah, I think that's kind of the last consideration. Do I play this Warden of the Chained or not? And then I could play 16 lands since we have Amulet, Double Carried and Haven. I would probably end up playing two Mountains. I don't think I want to play Unknown Shores, because if we need to pay one more mana for Dream Shaper Shaman, it becomes pretty hard to cast at 7. And Blessing at 5 is also pretty pricey. Maybe go plus 1 Forest, since we need green for the fixing from the Karyotids. Only 6 Islands, but if we look at the deck, we only need single blue, and we don't have a ton of blue cards, most of them are pretty expensive. Alright, we've got a bit of a weird one here, but uh, the deck looks pretty fun. We've got enough removal that we should be able to at least interact to some extent. And then we can win with big creatures, whether it's Typhon, a big flyer, a brine giant or a Dream Shaper Shaman. Definitely excited to see Dream Shaper Shaman in action since I don't think I've ever seen one be played, to be honest. Maybe a card that the bots overrate and therefore it doesn't end up in the hands of players as much. Alright, that's... Uh, Export the deck here. Alright, looks good. Sometimes it's worth it to sack the amulet on upkeep. Uh, I don't think this is one of those spots since I'm just gonna play the carrier to don't turn two. But uh, good to keep in mind. So we'll take our draw step. Probably just play Grove Dancer and pass. And then end of turn I can sack amulets, get a mountain.
No, so we don't have a whole lot going on. Don't really want to... Blessing, even though it would give me a bigger blocker. I think I can afford to take three here. And then hope that these two can stabilize us. Grey Merchants. Alright. So I could bounce the Soul Reaper in response. They also lose a Devotion. So it kind of saves us uh, three life here. And then do I activate Grove Dancer? Probably worth it since we have a Typhon in the deck. And I could randomly gain one life. If Kraken lives, we get to loot with uh, Shaman. That's unfortunate. Well, the Shaman still blocks everything here, so it's still a decent blocker. And then next turn I could maybe play Blessing, kill something, and then sack the Blessing to the Dream Shaper's ability. That's aggressive. So that's some training is also great with the Dream Shaper. Probably put it on the Shaman itself, because if they do have another Fateful End, then I could get uh, blown out if they kill the Grove Dancer in response. Huntmaster's not bad. Probably play that, and then sure, I don't get to use a Shaman this turn. But I just want to add more stuff to the board so that if the Shaman does die, we don't fall too far behind. I could pump Grove Dancer attack, but I think I want it back to block the Blind Breath. I should probably play my land, since if they have a Aspect of Lamprey would discard both cards anyway. So I'll stay back, and then next turn we can start using the Shaman's ability, maybe. Opponent's gonna sack Lampad to the Soul Reaper. I could Blessing, but my opponent can sack whatever I try and kill in response to the Soul Reaper. So maybe I'm better off not doing uh, anything this turn and just sacking the training to the Shaman. Yeah, let's just play a land and pass. Ooh, nice. Got a free Typhon. It's a pretty good find. I do have to be a little bit careful that I don't deck myself with the Grove Dancer. This game could end up being pretty grindy, so I don't think I'm gonna keep using it. Got plenty in the graveyard already for the Typhon. So now could be a good turn for Blessing. I don't know. Doesn't seem necessary is the thing. I could just sign Grove Dancer to the Shaman, maybe upgrade it. Because if my opponent plays a Flyer, then I want to have an answer to it. Next turn I'm also definitely going to consider attacking with the Typhon. Witness is a nice pickup. Just going to play it safe since we're at 13. Right. They did have a Fateful End in hand this entire time. Or maybe they just found it, who knows. Definitely feels like they might have had it a little bit longer. Ouch, Blind Breath takes out Witness. And now I'm forced to trade... ...for this Marauder. But then we can escape Typhon, so it's not too bad. Blind 
Blessing's a great pickup too. Maybe this is a turn where I'm supposed to use my removal now that I don't have Soul Reaper available. I could even go Blessing and then just use the Shaman. Take out the Soul Reaper. And then just use a Shaman. Because they technically don't have any good attacks through the Shaman anyway. And now that the uh, Soul Reaper is gone, we don't feel as bad about using Blessing in the future. So yeah, this Dream Shaper Shaman's doing work. Definitely pretty impressed by it so far. Now we'll escape Typhon. And I'm just not going to use the Shaman. I should probably exile creatures I don't want in case my opponent finds a Timurat. Otherwise I can gain a bit of life with it. I don't think I have any way of getting creatures back from the graveyard anyway. So it's fine to exile them. And then I still need to find a flyer to help me end the game before we deck ourselves. Ooh, spicy. Opponents got their own Shaman. Well, we're just gonna kill it with Arosa's Blessing here. And then probably put it on the Typhon so I can start attacking with it. And then they're probably going to trump with a Piper, but that's okay. Alright, they're trading. Pretty happy with that. Can pretty easily escape it again. And now my other creatures can maybe start attacking too. Now we can give it Trample too. And Double Rats, definitely useful. 13 cards left. So hopefully they don't find the final death for Typhon, otherwise we might uh, not have enough time to close out the game. Still have a Brine Giant left in the deck which could help finish Couple flyers, but not too many. Opponents with 19 still. So we're definitely decking first. Another Blessings, excellent. Although, do we even need it? I can escape uh, again if this dies, since the trading would also end up in the graveyard. So I think I just offer the trade. That way they also don't get any Soul Reaper value. Opponent takes it. Yeah, drawing three with Eidolon is maybe a bit sketchy. So I might just sacrifice it to the Dream Shaper Shaman and just play Warden. And I can trade Nyat for the Rage Hound if I want to. Yeah, I don't think I want to get rid of training since the trample is pretty important. There's a Wave Rider. Alright. Opponent even sacrificing the Rage Hound. Which is also a bit surprising since it did have a good attack. And yeah. There's Timurat. So glad I exiled as many creatures as possible so far. Grasp takes out Wave Rider. The cool thing about Shaman is that also it kind of gets all the good threats out of our deck 
without necessarily decking us, since we'll still have a bunch of lands in the deck. Suppose if I Blessing, then the Warden also gets to attack. Could even, like, Blessing and attack with everyone, basically. Points at 15. Yeah, they can't really afford to take a ton of damage. So maybe this is a turn where we're going to push our advantage. And take out the Soul Reaper. This seems like a fine attack. I guess I could have cast Blessing and then played Giant and then I still would have had 3 mana for Shaman. Probably not gonna matter too much. Yeah, they're taking 14, they can gain 2. Alright, we got there. So yeah, Dream Shaper Shaman was kind of our last uh, threat standing, and it did a ton of work. Upgraded Satessan Trainings and Warbriar Blessings into actual creatures. Seems like a keeper. The Tessin training is pretty nice alongside one drops. So we've got two mountains, a traveler's amulet, and two caryatids to help us with the red mana. Sure. I'm pretty happy uh, with that exchange. Also, until they exile the Wardens, it will still have its ability. So if I play Witness next turn, it will still gain me two life. Alright, that makes more sense why they played Apathy, since they wanted to play Chimera. Could play Shulkranken first, but I don't have anything really worth discarding yet. I don't hate the Green Omen, I probably would have played it in this deck. But unless you've got a reason to splash... It usually doesn't make the cut, since you just want uh, to play cards that impact the board. Ooh, nice opponent with the Flicker, Dreadful Apathy, play here. That's pretty good. Blessing can take out Chimera. Could play Kraken first and then next turn Blessing with Kraken in play. I think I like that the most. Because Warden wouldn't be able to attack since we're lacking a 4-powered creature at the moment. I don't think we have to be as concerned about Mantle when we're winning the race. But yeah, I have to have more removal. But yeah, the, I guess the worst case was if they had the insights and the Mantle. Because then we could definitely end up losing the race. Stern Dismissal. It's an interesting one. I could... Sadly, I can bounce my own Witness. I could bounce the Apathy to ambush the Chimera, but that's only going to work if they're tapped out somehow, which is not going to be the case. 
yeah, I could blessing the, the witness to kill Chimera, but I think I want to keep blessing on a creature that will stay in play, if possible. So I think my play is going to be attack with Eidolon, play Wave Rider and pass, and then maybe next turn blessing with a Wave Rider. That looks like they might have a trick, which we can potentially blow out with the dismissal. Indomitable will. Yeah, let's just bounce that. And we still trample for two. Can also still use the witness's ability to scry if they don't exile it. So now going for the blessings a little sketchier. If they counter this, I can still blessing. I don't love attacking with Wave Riders since they could easily have an enchantment at instant speed to ambush it with the Chimera. Could also blessing with the Warden. Uh, that way if they have some sort of bounce spell for the Warden, it's not as bad. But I would rather have the two toughness on the Wave Rider for sure. And we'll see if this works. This way if they pump the Chimera by playing an enchantment, it would still die since we're fighting with a four-powered creature. And that worked out. I don't think I want to risk the Eidolon, since next turn I can sack it to draw three cards. So I'll just send the Wave Rider for now. And then next turn we can refuel with the Eidolon. Can maybe attack with it, and then after damage I could still sack it. Wow, Archon of Sun's Grace. Don't know if they were holding out or if they drew it for the turn, but uh, yeah, that's a scary card. So no more scry with the witness. Yeah, that kind of stops us in our tracks. All right, those are some fine pickups. So where do I start? I think with Arasta, since Typhon enables the Warden to attack, and if this gets exiled, it's also worse for me. All right. Doesn't look like uh, they have counter spells. That's a pretty good draw. Could play Naya, then put it there. Could put it on the spider, so that it uh, can potentially attack and block into the Archon. Alright, and that does it. Sweet. So yeah, the Eidolon pretty key here at helping us refuel and find the cards needed to overpower the Archon of Sun's Grace. Solid opening hand. Do still need double green for a Typhon here, but in the meantime we can block with Warden of the Chains. I think I still play Warden, because if we do find forests, it's worth a lot more than just getting in with a Grove Dancer, potentially. Alright, that's fine.
could potentially bounce the Banishing Light with a Dismissal. If we need a 4-4 Ambusher on defense, it's probably not going to come up. Yeah, that's a scary forerunner. Yeah, we're not in great shape, but um uh once we can cast these, we'll feel a lot better. So yeah, I can make the play I described where we dismissal the Banishing Lights and block with the Wardens. Problem there is that opponent gets their Banishing Light back. I would much rather just be able to trade Typhon for the Forerunners. So I'll probably take six. Yeah, probably dismiss all the Forerunners now. Feels like uh, a reasonable spot for it. They can't replay it this turn. I prevent six damage. Next turn I can prevent a bunch of damage. So I could pump the Grove Dancer and attack with it. Or the Wave Rider, which they're probably happy to trade with the Glory Bears. Alright. Fine trade. Well, now that I lost my enchantment creature, I still can't play the giant. So do I still want to attack with the Huntmaster? We're taking a lot of damage on the way back. It's not often that it's this late in the game and we still can't cast our spells. Well, if we draw an enchantment, they're technically dead next turn. If we don't die. Alright, that's scary. Attack with all, 15, 20 damage of trample. So I'm not dead on board, but I'm forced to block with witness, is that right? Yeah, if I just block with Unmaster and Wardens, I take Exaxes. Yeah, I have to chump one creature either way here. So, might as well take out a creature, so I have to decide between killing Forerunner or Beetle. I think I want to kill Forerunner so that the Beetle also becomes chompable. They get to kill Witness and Nylea's Huntmaster. Take 9 total down to 4, they get a token. I can double block Renata and survive without losing Witness, because they would trample for 1 here. If I double block with Huntmaster and Wardens, plus 12 is 13, so it would die exactly. Otherwise, the playoff 
Wardens and Huntmaster on Renata and hope to top deck enchantment would be quite good. But uh, that, that doesn't quite do it. I think this gives me the best chance. So, there's my double green. Yeah, actually, if we drew Arosa's Blessing, we would have won here. Have two of those in the deck. So that would have still been an out. But I think we're dead on board now. Giants adds the most toughness. Nine, but this tramples. Yeah, close game. If we found uh, mana to cast Typhon or Giant a little bit sooner, we would have had a good chance, because then we wouldn't have been forced to block with our Flyers, and those could have gotten across the finish line. Well, three red cards, no red mana, it's going to be difficult to keep. This is a bit better. Keeping Eidolon alongside Karyatid and Haven makes it much better, because then we can use it as a mana sink. I could bottom the Wave Rider and just rely on Karyatid and Haven, and then as soon as we play Typhon, Karyatid makes double mana, which I can use to sack Eidolon in a couple turns to reload which might be more important, since we're on the play into a mulligan. And then probably gonna lead with Karyotid, unless we're up against maybe someone with black mana, because then we could maybe play around Mogus's favor. We'll see. Because Haven, I can potentially use the mana the same turn I play it, which is a bit more efficient. They could have the Red Omen to kill Karyatid too, which punishes me over Haven, but Haven can also enable Constellation later. Alright, there's a Red Omen. So, I guess we'll hit for one, play Haven. Could also save the Haven, but don't have any Constellation cards I care about at the moment. So, next turn, I have 6 mana, so still one short of sacking Eidolon, which is 7. Slaughter Priest plus Omen, a pretty good combo. Piper and Slaughter Priest, a pretty good combo too. So ideally we find some removal for this Priest. Alright, Wings of Hubris. So next turn, I can sack Eidolon. I guess I'm fine trading Typhon for their creatures, but they would probably take four. And then I might be taking four on the way back. Could also sack Haven to make it 2-2, but I think I need the mana for Eidolon. So I'm probably just gonna pass. Can't really block the Slaughter Priest, but I can maybe prevent two damage from the Piper. And when we have Eidolon about to draw three cards, I think I'm happy kind of playing a longer game. As opposed to trying to race. Warden's not bad. Now I can attack with Typhon if I want to, since I can jump with Eidolon 
on the Piper. They might have another Omen of the Forge here. Or a Fateful End, sure. Once we sack Eidolon, we'll get another creature in Graveyard, so we're not too far from escaping Typhon. Farika spawn will be an issue going late, though. Don't know if we can beat that card. So I really need removal for priests so they can't sack the spawn to it. And then ideally find my 3-4 flyer which can block Farika spawn. Could technically draw both here. Well, Blessing deals with the priest at least. And then we still need to find a flyer. So I could play Giant now. And that still leaves two mana for Blessing. Seems good. Now the problem is we've got a bunch of big creatures and our opponent's got a Farika spawn. So we'll need to find some cheaper stuff. Well, Timurat punishes us for not escaping Typhon as soon as we could. But I guess we didn't have enough cars in Graveyard yet. Alright, Typhon gone makes it a lot more difficult. But not impossible. So giant attacks, play Warden. Probably just empty my hand, could also make a wolf token. A wolf token's probably worth more than a Karadin in play. Since we've already played Eidolon, which is our biggest mana sink, I guess like a Dream Shaper Shaman could also be a reason to play Karyatid. Annex, all the demigods assemble. Well, at the end of the day, we're gonna need to find a flyer to block this uh, Wings of Hubris. Or a Reach creature. Alright, so you're saying there's a chance. Probably see a double block on the Warden, and I'm not sure which one to kill. Probably Annex, which might be able to get past Rasta with more devotion. Probably upkeep. I could sack Amulet to thin out the deck. Did we scry anything to the bottom? A wave Rider at the start when we mulliganed. Wouldn't be the best draw, wouldn't be the worst draw. Could also keep Amulet in play in case we find Dream Shaper Shaman, because then I can sack it to find a permanent with it. So, could go either way here on sacking Amulet on upkeep. Between the Blessing and the Karyatid, I guess we have enough stuff to sacrifice to the Shaman that I don't need to keep the amulets. So I would rather thin out the deck. Probably get another mountain. So what are good draws here? So Tessin Train would be fine, Dream Shaper Shaman, Witness of Tomorrows, Arosa's Blessing, Shoal Kraken, Second Blessing, Huntmaster maybe. I've got some decent draws left. Huntmasters are right. 
So I can target the Warden of the Chained to trample for a bunch. Now, of course, I could block with Farika spawn, but then we should have enough sacrifice fodder. It will turn into a 5 6 flyer. But we can take a hit. And I can send in Brine Giant as well. I guess I have to be careful with the Wings of Hubris that I don't take 5 and leave myself at 5, because then I can sack the Wings to get in 5 as evasive points of damage. Timurit can gain him a bit of life back. It's gonna be close. Bottom, bottom. Their place probably just to escape spawn next turn. And then we'll have to see. Opponent has two blockers, four attackers. Yeah, I think that uh, leaves them dead on board. Block, block, take five exactly. They don't have mana to use Timurit. Satyrs can block. And opponent explodes. Wow, what a game. Every point of life mattered here in the end, since we had Xaxes. Time for the final boss. Keepable, if an exciting hand. Black green. Typhon's not bad. I guess I should keep up Island in case I draw Eidolon. They got the libation. All right, let's get the Typhon out there. A voracious Typhon doesn't mess around. Hydra's growth. So where do we put the blessing? Probably on the Trampler. I think I'll put it on Warden of the Chains. We have a Brine Giant that can enable it later too. Giant currently costs six. So, if I play land next turn, I should be able to play it, and I'm worried about a potential discard two from our opponents, in which case I'll discard land and wave rider and keep giants. Although, I guess if they play the discard two, gain three up to seven, they would just be dead on board, so I guess it doesn't matter. Alright, that was a quick final boss. But uh, yeah, we hit all three colors just in time. Good curve, Typhon is a very good card and yeah goes to show that even some of the wackier three color decks can get there if you've got the right fixing and yeah our deck kind of splashed out of necessity since we didn't have much removal in just blue green which is one of the weaknesses of dark type so dipping into red for Iros's blessing paid off 
And Dream Shaper Shaman looked very impressive in the first couple games we played it, so... Yeah, overall pretty happy with the entirety of the draft, even if we did pass up on a shiny mythic at the start. Pack's not too interesting now that the rares are missing. Yeah, Warden of the Chain also did uh, a lot of work. Happy we ended up splashing that one. Alright, sweet. So yeah, I want to thank everyone for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.